such as this because we need this people don't realize just how much we need the togetherness of the body of Christ that when we assemble together and he dwells in the midst of our praises according to his word and we Amen. come together and we begin to praise and we begin to lift him up and magnify his name and his presence comes into the place it does something for us it does something for us. 
us. It lifts us up and it strengthens us and it puts the devil to flight. It's one of the reasons why the devil tries so hard to keep people away from church. It's because if they can get to the house of God, the Spirit of the Lord can touch them and do something for them. And he knows it, so he tries everything he can to keep people away from church. Yes. I want to tell you, there's been times I've went into the house dragging after working 10 or 12 hours in the heat and the weather. Went in dragging. But it may have been a song. It may have been a testimony. It may have been something the preacher preached that night or whatever. But I come out of that place skipping and rejoicing yes. because the presence of the Lord was there. Yes. And it always blesses. Hallelujah. So glad to have each and every one of you here. You are an important part of our life and of our week. So glad whenever you're able to be here. We want to remember our prayer list this morning and those that, that are on our prayer list we've been praying for. And the Lord is touching. The Lord is moving. And we believe that. And we're getting good reports of continually of how the things that the Lord is doing. Sister Bev sent me a text earlier and asked that we remember her this morning. She's sick and not able to be here and apologizes for that. But uh, she she asked that we remember her in prayer this morning. Remember Alan. Let's remember, continue to remember Alan uh, in California. The Lord is moving miraculously in his, in his situation with all the cancer and things that he's got. Uh, we, you know, I gave the testimony a few days ago of all the tumors in his brain uh, that were gone. Well, his wife sent a text this week and his lungs, his lungs were, were full of, of, of cancer. And right now, today, his lungs are operating at 110%. Praise God. The Lord is touching and the Lord is moving. And kept telling me that, oh, I feel the presence of God when I said that. You talking about a shout. You talking about a shout because I mean, you know, before this, his lungs probably didn't work at 110%. But the doctor said this week that his lungs were working at 110% because that's the power of prayer. Yes. That's what prayer does. Now, he still have some other health issues and things that, and that, that we're still praying. We're still believing God yes. is going to do a complete miracle, completely heal his body. And we're, yes. <coughs> we're believing that. Hallelujah. Well, anybody has any spoken prayer requests this morning? Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our great God of heaven, we love you. We thank you for this day. For your love, for your grace, and for your mercy. My Lord God of heaven, you are so good to us that we can never thank you enough. My Lord God of heaven, we come to you this morning because we know the power of prayer. We have experienced the prayer answering power of a miracle working God. And Lord of heaven, you know the names on our prayer list and you know those that are in need of healing and we're praying for healing. There are some that need deliverance and God, I pray for deliverance for them. Others have other personal needs and you know what they are. And Lord God, I pray for Bev today that you touch her body. And Lord God, there's one near my heart right this moment that you know. <coughs> and I'm asking you to touch on their behalf. Touch right now. The enemy is trying to steal them away. My Lord God, we stand in faith believing this morning that greater is He that's within me than He that's in this world. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. <coughs> You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice, they'll say old lies. If you're trying to deal with the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's away. 
Hallelujah. We know the key to God moving in our lives is our faith. You know, if you just believe a little bit, that's what you're going to receive. It's just a little bit. But if you open up that faith and say, God, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill, but I know you're going to make a way. <coughs> Even if it gives you, somebody calls you up and says, will you come over and mow my lawn? My lawnmower broke. Can you mow my lawn? I'll pay you $50. God's going to make a way somehow. You've got to have faith. That's right. God, you know, when he couldn't do many mighty works in his hometown because of unbelief. That's right. They just didn't believe. And if you don't believe this morning, you're not going to receive one thing from the Lord. And I believe that God wants us to not only believe it, but to increase our faith. That's it. You know, we've all been there when we've searched for the light of day in the dead of night. Yes. You know, that's when the devil likes to talk to you is in bed at night or you're sitting up late at night. He wants to talk to you and tell you, remind you of every hurt. Somebody, some, something, somebody said 10 years ago and it tore you up deeply and you kind of got over it and all of a sudden he'll bring it back to you just like that for you to feel that pain and you begin to doubt God again. Let's sing that chorus again. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old time. We've all run to things we know that just ain't right. But there's a dead of light. There's a dead of light. If you've got faith, it's a faith taker. to make you think that you're all alone, you're isolated, God's nowhere around, He's a liar. Amen. Right now, you just need to tell the devil you're a liar. Yes. You are a liar. Yes, He is. Devil, you're a liar. Father, Father. Get thou behind me, Satan. You have to do like Jesus did a couple times. When He said, devil, just get behind me. Yes. Get out of here and leave me alone. Get off my shoulder. Get off my back. There's the highway. Go down the road. I believe what the Word has said. I believe what God has spoken. Yes. I'm standing on the Word. I'm standing on the promises of the Word. And my mind not feel it every moment of the day. 
But God is not a liar. And God has spoken that He is always with me. His Spirit is always with me. He's right here to help me, to guide me, to direct me and keep me. Yes. And I stand on the promise of God's Word. Yes. Amen. I stand on the yes. promise of God's Word. Will not fail. God will not fail. No. There's not one promise that God has ever made that He's not kept. Not one. Not one promise that He's ever said, this is what I'll do. That He has not fulfilled His promise. Yes. You just need to stand up to the devil and tell the devil you're a liar. You're trying to drag me down. You're trying to pull me down. You're trying to destroy me. But my Lord Jesus came that I might have life and have life more abundantly. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's Thank continue to work. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice for the same old lies, if you're trying to find the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you've got faith, he's a
worship you this morning, Lord. We praise you, Lord, as we sent your presence in this place this morning. Of course, we raise you up. We lift you up. Holy Lord of heaven, as you raise us up, Lord God, as you raise our spirits up, as you raise us, oh Lord, we magnify you, Lord, we glorify you. We give you praise and we give you honor. Hallelujah, Spirit. something on his heart he's been praying i've been praying i hope you've been praying yeah. and the lord's going to speak to us right now so let's get i feel the presence of the lord in this place yes. so let's just continue to worship and praise the lord this morning good morning if you have your bibles with you this morning i'd like you to turn to the book of second chronicles chapter 24 verse we're going to read through verses 4 and through 7 give you a chance to find that. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you yes, do for hallelujah. us. God, you're thank you, mighty Jesus. God. Hallelujah. You know, it's been such a uh, a busy week, but it's been so restful also. I want to thank you, Brother Ricky and Sister Jackie, for giving me the opportunity to minister. And uh, I've thought so much about the goodness that God has been toward me, how much He showed me. Uh, I stand before you a, a fallen, broken vessel in times past. But God's Spirit always has brought me back. Yes. Amen? That's right. Because for some reason, He don't count us out. Yes. Chapter 24, verse 4. He don't count us out. Amen. You know, I've heard countless amount of times to where I've heard people say when new people come into the church, I hear people say give them just a little bit of time and they'll be back out doing the same things that they used to do. I've heard people say that. I remember my own cousin Mike. He was a biker. He rode with a group called the Hell's Lovers for a long time. I said, Mike, would you go to church with me? And uh, one day he decided he would go to church with me. And he went to church with me a few times. And did you know the sinner's heart automatically feels like that they're not accepted. That they're not wanted. He told me, he said, I was a member of a certain church off of Grand 58. And uh, after 10 years of not going there, I was received a letter. And the letter had said, you are no longer a member of this church. <laughs> Because you haven't been. I want to tell you this morning there's a greater church yes. than Cross Point Church. Yes. There's a greater church than Family Life Church. There's a greater church than the Hensley Church that I pastored. 
The greatest church of all is the church of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, amen. Amen. And then when we accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior, at that very moment, he begins to start a church yes, in yes. our life. If yes. you're all there, I'm going to read for you. Second Chronicles chapter 24, starting in verse 4, it says, And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. And he gathered together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go out into the cities of Judah and gather of all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year and see that ye haste the matter. Howbeit the Levites hasted it not. And the king called for Jehoiada the chief and said unto him, Why hast thou not required of the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection? According to the commandment of Moses, the servant of the Lord, and of the congregation of Israel, for the tabernacle of witness. For the sons of Talia, that wicked woman, had broken up the house of God, and also all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord yes. did they bestow upon Balaam. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, let us draw a line in the sand at this time this morning, Father. And let us realize that we cannot serve Jehovah God the same way that we serve this world. Father, help us to just bestow upon us a, a heart and a, a longing for worship, a heart and a longing for ministry, because it just does not stay in this church. It goes everywhere that we go as we reach out into this world. God, we just ask you, put in us a heart that longs for you. Put in us a way that we can find you, that we can be directed by you. We ask that your Holy Spirit come this morning and begin to change us from the inside out. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Some 20 years ago, I was reminded by the Holy Spirit as I was working this week. We went to a singing in Mississippi. And uh, it was me and Esther, and it was kind of a trick by one of Esther's family members for us to go. And we get there thinking that we was hosting a singing when really it was an open mic singing. And uh, we went there and we still sang. It was God's will for us to sing that night. And I still remember as we pulled into the driveway, we were sitting in the van for a minute and it was getting time to have church. And all of a sudden, y'all want to tell you, there was a trailer park around this church all the way around it. And when church time had started to come to pass, the trailer park over there began to empty out. And it looked like a big herd of cattle coming into the church. And as we walked into the church, I seen a pastor laid out by the pulpit with his face in the ground and he was praying to God. And there was people of the church around him also praying. And he was praying that God would tell him something to tell people that they would be able to be able to worship God in a way, in a truth, and in a life. It was a different meaning and different sin as far as my eyes could see than anything I've ever seen yeah. before. It was people hungry for yeah. the power of God. Yeah. And when they Whoa. began to sing and when they yeah. began to shout and when they began to lift up, you begin to see God in its physical form sweep across the people. Yes. It was great. It was the greatest thing that I had ever seen in my life. And then when you come back, sometimes you get that feeling you want to carry it with you everywhere you go. Yes. But then there's people around you who want to take that feeling away. Yes, yes they, they do. I call it in my mind the trailer park church. <laughs> Because I was raised most of my life in duplexes and in a trailer park. And I remember, just to give you a little background, my dad had no education. But he had something called two hands. And they worked every single day of his life to make sure that we kids had food on the table. He made sure that every bill was taken care of. My mother was the kind of woman, Sister Jackie, that you could bring your paycheck home to and all the bills would be paid. Yes, amen. He never had to worry about anything. Yes. But I'll say this, she done a lot of stuff because 
My dad had no education. He couldn't read. He couldn't write. I remember being a child, he would set us on his knees and he would read us books. And I didn't find out till my mother passed away that he couldn't read at all. He was just reading pictures to us. Yes. He was a man of personality. Yes. A man of uh, all kinds of different things. <laughs> but he made an impact on my life. Yes. yes. Now, mom and dad, they wasn't churchgoers. I want to tell you that. They did believe in God, though. And my mother, she passed away at the age of 41 when I was just 18 years old. And I watched my dad go through the hardest time of his life. I say all that to say this, to bring you into this, is that church is so important. Yes. I remember just a year after mom had passed away, there was a man named Bud Caldell who had come to the church and he had sang a song. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon him and he said, there's somebody in this church today, you've been thinking about committing suicide and I want to tell you, don't do it. I've never seen my dad be emotional, but he started crying and jumped up and took off running out the church and he got in his truck and left. And later on, there was a lady by the name of Sister Mayhard that preached a, preached a message. And this is dad just now really starting to get into church. And she said, don't hang your heart on the willow tree. Yes. And I've never seen my dad change by the Word of God like that. Because at that very moment, church, he began to take his pity party somewhere else. I hate that he found another woman that was no good. But he began to seek God for his own. See, the outside of the church, family, can I call you family this morning? Right. The outside of the church means nothing. I love one of the worst days of my life would probably be when we leave this building. Because for some reason, when you step out of a building like this and people hear the word church, they no longer want to be a part of it. Because church has gotten the bad taste in so many people's mouths because of some of the people that's inside of it. Yes. Are we a perfect people? No, we're not a perfect people. I told Esther, I said, if we ever pastor a church again, the name of it will be the not-so-perfect church. That way that people would know to come on in because we're not so perfect. Y'all, I make mistakes all the time, and I have to catch myself. But see, the inside of the church, the inside of the house of God, if you begin to search and to seek out the inside of the house of God, what you will find is people indwelled with the Holy Spirit that's trying to seek God for themselves. They need the leadership of a pastor, yes. the leadership of musicians, yes. the leadership of people in the church. Because at that point in time when they receive it, this is a place that's meant for you to change. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, yeah. If you are here today and you haven't changed a single bit since you stepped in this place, there's something wrong. Yes, amen. You should be changed. Amen. See, the inside of the church is the place of change. Yes. You know, I told, I, we was talking about this just this morning, and I was telling Josh and I was telling Esther, we have to get away from asking people to come to church and start telling them about Jesus Christ. Yes, right. Once right. they have and receive Jesus Christ, Church will be the next answer that they're looking for. Yes. Because what people need is a change in their life. See, one thing I realized, Brother Ricky, is we are plowers in the field. Yes. And what we do is we begin to trench down deep into the hearts of people. Yes. And we begin to reach down deep. And they'll say, I never had this much trouble since I started coming to church. That's because the things in your life has found it been touched yes. by the Spirit yes. of God. And let me tell you something, when it reaches yes. down inside of you and you start to feel that change, the Holy yes. Ghost is saying, yes. move with me, yes. walk yes. with me. Yes. Yeah, I, mean, I heard a song that says, where I go, I, where you go, I go. And where you stay, I stay. When the cloud was there, it was time to stay. When the cloud moved, it was yes. time to move. Yes. I'm asking you the question today. Is the cloud there? Yes. And are you staying? Yes. If you're waiting for Brother Rick to be the perfect pastor, 
I'm sorry, brother. That's not going to happen. Amen. Amen. Right. Because he's going to make mistakes. Yes. Right. See, the king of your life determines the shape of your temple. Yes. I'm going to say that again. The king of your life determines the shape of your temple. Luke 16 says, in 13, it says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one yes. and despise the other. And Jesus says something very, very important. He says, you cannot serve God and man. That's right. That's right. In other words, what he was trying to tell you is, you cannot serve God and serve the world. That's right. That's right. Though you have to be in this world, you don't have to be a part of it. Right, right. Because what I've noticed is my biggest church is Kohler Distribution Center. Yes. And I've tried to line my life up with the Holy Spirit. Because one thing I know about the Holy Spirit is it will line me up with the Word of God. And one thing about the Word of God is it will begin to force me. I say it's forced, but what I mean is really forced. Because if you're listening to God, He will nudge you in the right direction. Yeah. He's not just going to punch you into the direction, but He's going to push you in there. You know, I was reading one book about sheep. And let me tell you something about sheep. You know, the Bible carries that it tells us a lot as far as we are a lot like sheep. Yes. Yes. And this book was saying... That sheep have to have a good shepherd. Yes, Did y'all know that? Yes. Sheep have to have a good shepherd. Why? Because once the fleece gets all matted up and nasty, it attracts flies. Yes. Did you know once your life gets all nasty, you attract flies? Yes. Amen. And you know what those flies do? I'm going to say something gross this morning. The flies fly up in the nose of the sheep. Yes. And they begin to put eggs inside of the brain cavity yes. of the sheep. And as those eggs release, they turn into maggots. What do we all know maggots turn into? They turn into flies. The flies go flying around in the brain cavity. And you want, what do you think it does to the sheep? Yes. It drives them crazy. crazy. It drives them crazy. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they will drive themselves right off a cliff. Yes, they will. Right into a wall. Yes. Does this not sound like some of your life? Yes. The making, the continue. You ever said, why do I continue? and continue to make bad decisions. Am I the only one in the church today that's made bad decisions? Oh, no. no. Y'all, no. I want to tell you, if you if you could talk to Esther for about three hours, you could hear all the bad decisions that I've made. A lot of bad decisions, Brother Danny. I'm talking about a lot of bad decisions. But the Temple of Solomon, what I want you to see is what's beautiful. Yes. Inside pieces laid of gold, yes. angelic hosts all around, yes. and just covered with gold. It was beautiful. It's something that Solomon put all this time, effort, struggle, everything in to doing what his father couldn't do, build the house of God. Yes. Can I tell you, the tabernacle was just as good. Yes, yes. it was. It was just as good. But since they found a place to dwell, yes, they wanted to build God a house. Yes, they Amen. did. That's the same thing Cross Point Church wants to yes. do. Build God a house. Yes. Because every church has its personality. They want to set a personality for the church so that that kind of people that has that kind of personality can come to that church. There's a church for every single person yes, in this there world. Is. In a personality, you'll find it. If just because you go to this church and you don't like it, go to another church. If you don't like it, go to another church. If you don't like it, then something's probably wrong with you, but then try another church. Amen? <laughs> yes, so what I'm telling you is yes, the Temple of Solomon was beautiful. Yes, it man. was. But the Temple of Man is just as beautiful. Yes. Amen. This body yes. created in the image, the likeness, and God breathed into him the breath of life. Yes. Wow, the body. But it was corrupted. But the New Testament still says, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
In other words, at the moment of salvation, when God comes to live inside yes, he you. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. He lives inside of yes. you. Yes. You know what that means? That means, Brother Rick, my pastor of the church, but you. When God looks down out of heaven, he sees you the same way that he sees him. Exactly. He sees yes. you the same way that he sees me. Yes. And you know, I, when we was pastoring, what I found out was a lot of people would always call, Brother, can you pray for me? Brother, can you pray for me? I told God one time, I said, I want to tell you something, and I don't want to hurt your feelings. But the same prayer that comes out of your mouth is the same prayer that can heal you. Yes. Because it's the same God that I'm crying out to for you. But I will agree with you. Yes. That God will do what he says he'll do. So the temple of man, what are we doing with it? It's become desolate. Yes. Just like what we was reading in 2 Chronicles. We'll see that what happened was over time is the good kings would build the temple up. And the bad kings would begin to let it just tear down. I went in not too long ago at the church down in Hensley where we pastored at. And there's nothing changed except for there hasn't been people in it. And the building's falling down. All because a building has to have upkeep. Yes. And you can't upkeep it. You can do certain things to help this flesh, yes. but the Apostle Paul said, Body, bodily exercise profited little. Yes. But rather, practice yourself unto godliness. Yes. The broken house of God. It says in Mark 13, 2. No, Mark 13, 1. It says, And as he went out of the temple, this is Jesus, and to some of the disciples, it says, One of his disciples saith unto him, Master, See what manner of stones and what buildings are here? In other words, the disciples are looking and they're saying, Master, do you see everything around here and how beautiful it is? Do you see such a great work this is? Jesus is probably saying, yeah, I've seen it from heaven when it was built hundreds of years ago. I've seen everything since the beginning of time. He was probably saying, y'all y'all still not realizing that I am the Word. I was the Word made flesh. He's probably thinking in his mind, I wish you guys could quite figure out somehow to grasp that I always was. Yes. And always will be. Jesus was there when the temple was built. And every time it went desolate and destroy it. Amen? Yes. Amen. So he was looking at the temple. He probably looked down at <coughs> kings and kings and kings and seen it fall and rise. Yes. Fall yes, it did. and rise. If you look at American history, yes. the church has fallen Yes. and it rises. It falls and it rises. And one of the greatest tricks that could ever been played on any of us. And ladies, li listen to me when I say I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. Was when it took two people to have to make it. I'm talking about yes. make it. But you know now it takes two people to have everything you want also. But if a mother had enough time to spend nurturing kids, there's still going to be some it's going to go out and kill. It's the sin nature See it. that right. makes you have to do the thing. Don't ever tell me you ain't had a thought. If I could just knock him upside his head, I'd show him something. Right. Amen? That's right. I thought it in a church house before and said, man, I can't believe he'd even come up and say something like that. But I had to repent because your flesh will tell you things. Yes, it will. Don't you feel the constant telling you something? Sometimes you think, well, I might need a doctor because I'm a little bit crazy because I continuously hear these things going on in my mind. You ever think sometimes, like Brother Dan said that one more time, I'm going to knock him upside his head? <laughs> sure, you wouldn't knock him upside his head. But what I'm telling you is, when you have kings in your life, we go back to the verse that says, you cannot serve God and man. Everybody in here, you've got a king right now in your life. Yes. You've got a king. He's there. Whether you're man, whether you're woman, whether you're child, 
you got a king and it's telling you the things that you ought to do. And let me tell you something. Kings can tell you all day what to do. But you're the one that has to do it. I told a guy not too long ago, he said, well, the boss said we got to do this. And I said, do you do everything the boss tells you to do? Y'all, I'm not trying to rebel against the boss, but not everything the boss tells you is right. I remember dad told me one time, he said, always listen to your supervisor. And I said, okay. And he said, just like this. He said, I remember the supervisor, he come out to the line. He said, uh, I got these plastic parts I want to get painted. And I need you to paint them and then run them through the oven. Dad said, they're plastic. Mm. And he said, you just do what I told you. He said, no doubt I will. So he run the parts through the, the oven. And what do you think come, come out the other side? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. When we go through the oven, through the fires of life, yes. what's left? Did you know when fire inhabits this earth? Y'all done some beautiful remodeling to the house, but it's gone. Yes, yeah. that's right. Did you know when the fire comes, the nice truck, Josh, that you're making payments on, it's gone. And all that's left is what you started with. Yes. The soul. The flesh is gone. You'll have a new body. Yes. The flesh is gone. Yes. The temple was destroyed for a purpose. That's right. Mark 13 and 2 says, And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So the number one thing you got to remember, the walls of your first temple have to be thrown down. Let me tell you where the walls of the temple is first thrown down. The very minute that you hear the gospel for the very first time, that is almost like a battering ram ready to tear the walls down. Right. The walls are there. You've built walls. How many people in this place have built walls? Amen? Because one thing we know about building walls is it keeps the intruders out. Amen? Yeah, man. There's people on your job site that you've built walls around, and you don't want to share a whole lot with them because you have to build the walls up to keep them from intruding in what you have. Just a little bit that you have, you want to keep them in from intruding. Just the other day, I was at the uh, Family Dollar Dollar Tree in, uh, off of, in Landmark is what I'd call it. But uh, there was a man, I seen him coming up from then. I was trying to go on and get in the store. He said, sir, sir. And I kept on walking. I knew what he was wanting. He wanted some money. So I started slowing down. He, he slowed down to me and he said, uh, sir. I got a Little Rock bus pass, I want to say. I said, man, I don't ever go to Little Rock. I said, and honestly, I've got $15 on a card, and I can't give it to you because I have to have it. And I said, but I'll tell you this, and I began to share the gospel with him. And uh, it looked as if he was getting this, just his mind was just not. He said, well, man, uh, uh, I'd love to talk to you about this, but because somebody, Brother Rick, has already shared that gospel with him before. But let me tell you something about the gospel of Jesus Christ. For some reason, when you begin to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's something that just breaks up every single part of your being. Yes. It begins to say, hey, this can't yes, stay yes. here. I, be I heard Sister Ray Ellen saying like this, that little Johnny, he was there, and uh, Jesus was knocking on his heart's door, and he said... I can't let you in, Jesus, because there's a lot of nasty things in my heart. And he said, if you let me come in, I will take out every single yes. imperfection that's yes. about you. And I will make you more like me. And I will live with you. And you yes. will live with me. Yes. And see, God will be on the inside. What's the song say on the inside? Working on the outside. He's still working on me. Yes. He's still working yes. on me. Yes. And when you get that to that place, you're saying... God just work in me. Yes. You begin to see the move and the change yes, inside. That's right. That's right. Yes. Amen. But you have to hear the gospel. Yes. yes. Amen. Because it changes you. Yes. It says by the foolishness yes. of preaching. Yes. The acceptance of Christ tears down the walls. The acceptance yes. 
Y'all, there's going to be some hard times when you accept Jesus Christ as yes. your Savior. But the whole thing is, the scriptures is a reflection of things to come and of things inside of you. Where there was a temple here on this earth, Jesus preparing one yes. in heaven. Amen. And when it descends, let me tell you, you are in likeness of that temple. You are in likeness of that temple. There won't be no need for light because Revelation says He is the light. Jesus is the light. What holds us back from worship? What holds us back from worship? You know, I sat one time and I would hear songs and hear songs and hear songs. And I visited a church one time in some of the hardest times of my life. And for one time, not being behind a pulpit or not being behind a guitar. And I seen people up front and they was laid up on the floor with their face on the floor. They had their hands up in the air and they was worshiping God for who he was. And they was thanking God for all that he's done. And they was, I was seeing chains being broken, and people being changed. And I knelt down on that floor and just began to cry out for God because there was people in my life that I wanted God to begin to touch. It took every single part of me just to say, God, give me some kind of healing inside of me. Yes. 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 Because I had built walls Amen. back up. Because this temple likes walls. This temple likes people to stay out. But y'all, where your walls are built, the walls of everybody else around you. And in order to get in, you have to break your walls yes. to get into theirs. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I try to preach so personal and tell you things about me. Because if I can tell you things about me, then you can begin to break your walls down and begin to see God for who He is. Because this is not, this is flesh. Yes. This flesh has a desire all of its own. Yes. This flesh don't want to be here on a Sunday morning. This flesh don't want to be, but there's something inside of me called yes. Jesus Christ that wants me to be here. Yes, amen. And it pushes me to be here. Yes, and it amen. pushes me to preach the gospel. At one time, Brother Danny, I would be somewhere, I'm going to tell you, probably on a Friday, Saturday night, playing Nirvana in some bar. Because that's what my flesh wanted to do. That's what my flesh wanted to do. When Esther met me, I was not this guy. And as we talked the other day, she's changed with me as I've changed. And God moved and changed both of us. Because the guy I was, if you could look through the pictures on my Facebook, you see a long-haired guy, tie-dye t-shirts and, and whatever else I could get into. But God wants to tear down walls yes, he does. and build hedges yes, he does. of protection. Yes, Amen. He does. Amen. Amen. I believe there's a time in your life where you say, God, I need a hedge yes. of protection. Yes. Amen. Job, from the scripture, said he had a hedge around him. Yes, he did. He had a hedge around him. Mm -hmm. Nothing could come in until God said, it's okay. But you know, the book of James says, God tell no man but man is tempted when you're drawn away from the known lust. Yes. Right? Amen. I'm going to go to the book of John. I didn't have this one in there. This just spoke to me. John chapter 4, verse 21. And I'm going to read this to you. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, and you know not what. We know what we worship, yes. for salvation is of the Jews. Yes. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit in and in truth. Yes. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Amen. Amen. You mind if I sing a song? 
Would you, would you come up right here? so many churches get used to a guy and uh, Brother Rick's got a lot of attributes I've got a lot of attributes but don't ever expect him to be me right. and don't ever expect me to be him right. Amen. and uh, if you have anything in your life this morning that you want God to begin to move in I ask you to come up and Brother Rick will pray for you while I sing this song. Yes, amen. Oh, 
has prevailed in our society where it tells you that everybody stands on their own and be your own person and be your own island and you don't need anyone more taste and that's the longest life that you'll ever live trying to be an island to yourself. You need me, I need you. Together we need the Lord Jesus. Amen. We are a family. A family that we have something in common that we don't have in common sometimes with our own flesh and family. And that's our relationship Amen. with the Lord Jesus Christ. I have family that I love dearly, passionately. But there's a distance there because we don't have anything in common anymore. We don't have anything to talk about and share about. But I have family in the body of Christ that I can spend hours and hours with yes. because we can talk about the goodness of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We can share about His mercy. We can share about the things that He is doing yes. and how He has done. And what I said a few weeks ago brought us from there to here, but it's going to take us from here to there. Thank you, Brother Charlie, for a very on time word from the Lord. We have prayer for two people today. Remember Terry? Yes. And remember Mary? Yes. That they keep repairing her. Magnifier. Yes. God's given her a gift of saying she is a part of us and she's a part of this body, that God would fix it. The devil torments her with this because of the problem she's had with her eyesight right now. She needs to magnify her. The devil knows that, and he, I tell you, he gets into electronics. <laughs> the devil gets into electronics and technology. Yes. But I know a God is able to fix electronics and yes. technology. We do want to pray that the Lord will touch Sister Mary's eyesight. Yes, amen, right now. Give her a complete healing. Yes. We want to pray for Sister Terry who wasn't able to be with us this morning. She sent us a text this morning and and uh, requesting prayer. And pray for Terry. Pray for one another. Yes. Throughout this week, purposely let your mind go starting here. And go there, and go there, and go there. And every seat in this sanctuary, and who sits there? Yes. And call their name out of the room. Purposely pray for one another. Yes. Hallelujah. Sister Mary, stand up. Come. We're going to pray for you this morning. Yes. Y'all, let's come pray for Sister Mary. Yes. Our sight is a very precious thing. Yes. We're believing you for a complete healing right now. Touch her eyes. Touch her eyes, oh God. I can show you in the word, Lord God in heaven, where you open blind eyes and 
God, every well, you have resource that she has, Lord, Lord Jesus, God, we ask that they be perfectly to her as well, Lord. My Lord God, we believe Jesus. in you right now, Lord God. Yes, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord God, for oh, her magnifier and her voice. Lift her voice up, The other Lord things Jesus. that she depends on. Oh, Lord God, God that 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 lift her voice in triumph, right now, Lord, Lord, over that every enemy, every obstacle that meets her in life, Lord. God, we believe you. Because you're a great God, Lord. We You're not done with her, Lord. Lord. You Lord. still have a work. The voice is beautiful, and many love to hear it, Lord, Lord Jesus. Lord, God, in the end, God, what the enemy means for harm, we in know this situation, that you're Lord. going to turn it around and in use Jesus. it for your glory. In Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. 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 Yes, Praise mighty Lord. God. Hallelujah. Lord, let's remember Wednesday night. We are still study the tabernacle. I hope and pray that you've been enjoying this. I know I have. Yes, amen. And, uh, and uh, we haven't even scratched the surface of things that could have been said, but to try to keep from just really prolonging the thing, I've tried to, to keep it as, as uh, abru you know, abbreviated as possible, I guess you'd say. But I pray that it's a blessing, been a blessing to you. Let's remember next Sunday morning. But between now and next Sunday, let's tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. Share the gospel. Brother Danny's going to dismiss us this morning in word of prayer. Precious Lord in heaven, Almighty God, Lord, we stand before you in unison. We praise you and glorify your name.